Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. Hello, and welcome to the Pop Turnative Podcast. It's the podcast and talk show where we have digital discussions from the worlds of TV, film, pop culture, social media, everything really, depending on the guests, we talk about it all. As always, I'm your host, Pierre Meliotis, and social media, you know me as PDB. It's, you will recognize my guest as Mike in Stargirl, which you can watch on DC Universe and The CW. We are with Trey Romano. Trey, welcome to Pop Turnative, man. Thanks, man. Thank you for having me. No problem. Congrats so far on the early success of Stargirl, man. People love it, and it looks so good, and it's so much fun, man. Thank you. I'm glad that everyone likes it. You know, it looks good after everything's all done. How uh, how has it been uh, for you? The reception of it so far, because it hasn't been too too long. Yeah, no. It's, there's only been like a few episodes out, and everyone's like really loving it. Like I was looking at the uh, like the viewers from episode one to episode two. It's like the same amount of viewers, and people actually keep watching and are interested. And it's just like really cool because the characters just develop so much throughout the series. It's just so well written. That yeah, no, it's just exciting for everyone, really, because everyone really has their own focal point episode through the series. Yeah, and, you know, everyone's like really waiting for that. Just like you know, like uh, Cameron Gelman, who plays Our Man for like last episode. You know, it was just such you just did such a great job, and like people like they really focus on those characters. And that's why it's just so cool for the whole cast. Absolutely, you disagree with me, obviously, because I honestly think that uh, Mike is my favorite character. But you don't even think he's the best character. But he is the best character. You're so quick and funny and like confident. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, no, it's 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 funny you say that because uh, I I remember I auditioned for the for the role, and I. I did it with my friend Josh. I just I auditioned for it, and at the end, I had like probably good like thirty seconds to a minute of just straight improv with my friend. I just kept going back and forth, and then when I met Jeff, when I saw him, he was like, you know, the improv really got you like the like the role. That's what like really. I was like, that's it's great. So like, they they did bring in like the quickness uh, to Mike's character one hundred percent. So yeah, yeah, he's very quick. He's witty, but there's like a confidence and like a swag to Mike. Don't you agree, Trey? Oh, I, I completely agree. And throughout the season, you're going to see the swag kind of <laughs> like like fade out almost. And like he almost just like gets like jealous and blah, blah, blah. All these different things happen to Mike. But the swag is definitely there. No, I'm not going to discount the swag, but it it, it fades away. <laughs> Your face when um, you're told that you got to do a paper route in one of the first episodes is like one of the best things of all time. <laughs> That was a genuine face, man. I was just it was, it was the way Luke said it because what Luke does all the time is that he, we were rehearsing. He like just does it, you know, pretty dry, pretty dry. You know, like we're just we're just running sides, and then when he gets in it, he just he's so enthusiastic. He's like, you're gonna get paper up. You're gonna do this, and you're gonna do that. And I was like, damn, that's okay. I, I understand. But yeah, so like there is it, an amazing. I think one of the reasons why. So you know, Luke Wilson. I mean, an amazing career. Been in so many things. You know, like it, it's 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 incredible. So it's a two part question. I mean, one, what was it like to work with Luke Wilson? And two, I mean, it's more of like a comment than a question. I mean. The chemistry between you two is amazing. Like, it's awesome. You know what I mean? Really? No, I, I'm, I'm glad that carried over on stream because, first of all, I'm going to answer the first question. Luke is an awesome guy. He's just – he's – he's um, his, like, family is from, like, Northeast and, like, from Boston and all that. So that we kind of have the same humor. So I remember, like, the first time I saw him, we, he came in in this, like, mechanics outfit, like, into Jeff's office with his hat and it was the most stupid looking hat and I, I, I told him I was like nice hat and he was like thanks and I was like this person's actually like normal like he understands me so like after that we started we, I, we went to like a basketball game then after that we kind of just wanted to have lunch blah 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 and then like in these in the next few episodes like uh, Pat and Mike they kind of don't have as many scenes together so like when that started happening he was like I missed the scenes with Pat and Mike we gotta go get dinner so then, like, as that kind of started happening, that's that's when we kind of gelled the most. So, uh, yeah, no, just Luke, Luke is just a great actor in general. He makes the scene just better for everyone all around. And it's just, you know, the chemistry that we had was 100% genuine, you know. That, that carried off screen and on screen, and that's what made it so convincing because it was just it was just real and you know luke i consider a good friend to this day because you know he's just 
he's just a good guy and you know we always hang out so he, he's just it was just a great experience overall and it really brought it to the screen this is a t you are star girl is a television show it's a tv show it is a show though that just looks amazing and like when you're watching this show it feels like a movie man like it's crazy Mm -hmm. and, and just wait just wait right now like the, like the directing and everything is great but once you get into these later episodes and stuff just innately in the strips just get more intense and like cinematic and all stuff like that it just it just blows your mind like i was watching some scenes like from later in the season and this just like the cinematography and all these shots that just look so nice like they're just so so nice and also like the special effects but like off the charts, man. They're like they're awesome because they they mix them with practical and special effects. It looks so realistic. But yeah, I think just overall the the camera work and all the cinematography and all of everything, it, it's great for a TV show, especially like a CW show. What were you trying to accomplish with Mike when you got the role? I mean, we mentioned you know a bit like the swag and everything, but like when you were kind of auditioning for it, I mean, you're playing a young, you're playing like the younger brother figure. You know what I mean? Um, was there anything else specific that they told you that you had to bring to the role? Yes, actually, because it the Mike just serves as the comedic relief in the beginning. Blah blah blah. blah. You know, like you know he. It's not even what he says what is funny. It's just the situation that he puts himself is funny. So I just I just like kind of just delivered the lines how I would. And, you know, Jeff, Jeff told me that Mike definitely is a multi-layered character. There's different like sides to Mike. And uh, even when I just got when I got the audition, there was two scenes. There was a there was a, like a there was a comedic scene from like episode one. There's a scene from like episode nine or something like that. Mm -hmm. And the scene, um, the, the second scene, it was this really dramatic scene. And, um, you, you know, it was, there was such a contrast between both of these. Like, they, they were the same character, but they were so different. So, yeah, definitely there's a lot of different sides about Mike. And I did know that going into it. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, he just, he just tried to, we, we kind of tried to maintain his innocence, I guess, for as long as possible before he figures out everything. So, I hope what I'm about to say is not the first time you've heard this. You and Luke Wilson's character have similar hairstyles. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> I I think I liked Luke's hair better. Luke's hair was better because it was like back and it was suave and he was like, you know, it was like I look like a mop, you know, like my hair looks ridiculous. <laughs> like I, I naturally kind of got this like kind of like frizziest hair, but like there, I, I was like, well, I was, I'm watching it, and from the back, I'm like, what is, what's going on? Like it just looks like, but you know, I, Luke's hair is much better, I must say. There's a lot of amazing characters. I mean, you mentioned, you know, Neil Jackson plays Icicle, and you know, I love. I was like, like from the first couple episodes, like Brainwave is like one of the most creepiest like. <laughs> characters i've ever seen yeah <laughs> but um you know uh i like another thing too is you know i i'm like there's a lot of like social media posts and a lot of fan groups of star girl right and a lot of people are talking about how much they love mike and yeah. are so excited about like when they see mike you know what i mean what's that been like as a young up-and-coming actor kind of hearing that you know someone who's supposed to be there for the comic relief is kind of like Jettering all this popularity you know what i mean it must feel pretty cool i was surprised i was surprised because like mike mike's cool and all and like i, I was like i was like i don't know people are gonna like this character you know like is he too much is this going is this like and um and then i started i some i started like getting some dms like on instagram they were like dude you're so funny like i love your character like you're always eating or like this blah blah blah. And people like doing like fan edits of like who's who's Mike's mom? Who's he related to? And I was like, people are loving this character. This is all it's all an actor can ask for, honestly. Is it all that if the if the community likes the character, it's all you can ask for. And I'm just glad that I hopefully like delivered on the uh, the role. So I, I it's just really cool and I'm thankful for all these people that are like liking the show and liking Mike. But yeah, I, I it just it just it makes me happy whenever I see like, you know, like we love Mike, Mike's fire, like Mike's a little, uh, I was like, yeah. So it's, it's, it's definitely really cool. And I'm thankful for it because it yeah. gives me like the motivation to, you know, like keep, uh, you know, trying to like maybe hopefully like if we ever get any future seasons, like keep Mike, you know, really, um, really suave and cool.
Absolutely. Yeah, no, there, there's swag. Like, it, like especially, like, in the first, like, when you're introduced. Because it, it's, you, you have to know, right? Like, you have to, like, it's a first impression. Like, in the first couple of episodes, you know what I mean? Like, we're introduced to Mike and, like, right out the get-go, like, punches us with this, like, like this like this swag like we, we we were talking about you know yeah no it's like and it's also like a it's a combination of ultimate sass too yeah like, he's sassy too we didn't sass. talk about that he's definitely sassy it's just so funny because like that's why when he when he gets shut down an episode by like by pat like when he's like you're gonna get it you're gonna get a paper out i was like i was like i was, I was like thank god finally he's getting shut down but yeah it's uh it's he's, he's definitely sassy yeah <laughs> so trey you're you're an actor but you were also a kid. Yes, is How true. is it to balance the life of being an actor and being a kid who, you know, goes to school, you know, has hobbies like skateboarding and guitar. I'm hoping yeah. you do those two things. I hope that's yes, their opera. <laughs> yeah. It's not a lie. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, you know what I mean? Like, do you find it hard to balance the two? No, because I, 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 I don't because I never bring my work into like my life, my friends, and all that. I let that take care of itself. I never bring up anything. I never bring up that I'm in a show. I never bring up any of that because just it's the separate. It's definitely it's separate. The separate entities. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And, and if you know if people show interest in it, then yeah, I'll clearly I'll like talk about it and stuff like that. But I I I think the the main thing about just like and I I forgot who this is. Oh yeah, it's like yeah, Bill Murray. Bill Murray, like. He, None of the people that want to give him roles can ever call him directly because he's he cares about his, like he cares about just his like family life and his friends and his real real people in his life, and like you have to call us like one eight hundred number to like get in touch with them, <laughs> but like but like that's what I was I was like yeah like that 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 makes sense you know like when they, they want to enjoy their life and enjoy their work and to do that you have to keep them separate because they're they're separate parts of your life definitely. Absolutely. So you play the guitar. What's your favorite uh, type of band? Like, what what bands are you into, man? You know, like I was I was never really huge into any bands, like which is really interesting because people are like, oh, I I start playing guitar because I love Led Zeppelin or I love Rolling Stones. Well, I'm like, yeah, they're great, but I never play any of their songs or anything like that. I I love Jimi Hendrix. I love funk, but pretty much what I usually just try to do is like whenever I listen to those songs, I, I'm never like, Oh, I want to learn little wing or all along the watchtower or whatever it is. It's just like, I want to, I, I take people's techniques and then I try to do my own stuff. Like that's what, when you're a guitarist, guitarist, when you're a guitarist, then like you, you kind of take a bunch of other stuff into consideration. But a lot of people just play songs. I'm like, that's just boring as hell. Cause they're not my songs, you know, but that's a, uh, that's what I, I pretty much just like riff around all the time. I try to make my own stuff. Yeah. No, absolutely. And the skateboarding stuff too. I mean, you know, that like, I remember, you know, like the, like me kind of growing up in the, in the nineties and early two thousand. I mean, Tony Hawk was like, like all the Tony Hawk underground, like the, this, the video games and everything like that culture is like, it's funny. Cause we talk about you having that swag and being cool. I mean, there's, I feel like the whole, like, cool swag like um that will never leave skateboarding and snowboarding like it's always there oh no it's, uh, skateboarding culture is so ingrained in just regular culture at this point is that just like pe people just like and this is with a bunch of things a, a bunch of like cultures and just like like phantoms and all that shit but like what really happens is they 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 just get so integrated into regular culture in the u.s that they get overlooked Yep. And I, I think just skateboarding is such like a hidden gem of like culture. It's just like you can go to the skate park and just, you know, like and you can start talking to anyone. I remember like the first time I ever went to a skate park was like was like I was with my dad and I was I was like barely like ollieing. Right. So I was I was like I was going out like little ramp. I remember, like this was probably like two or three years ago. And this guy came over to me. He's like, hey, we just got some Krispy Kreme donuts. You like you want a donut? And I was like, Dude, these people are great. <laughs> yeah, like, I was like, yeah. I don't even have to do anything. I'm already getting offered donuts, you know? Like, it's just such a community. You can, like, go up to anyone and just talk. And, and you know, you can learn a lot from these people. It's 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 just, it's, like, mid-90s is such a great, um, it's such a great, like, exhibit, I guess. Like a, yeah. 
the great. He's are, like, are, do yeah. you want to kind of work in, uh, like, I mean, for example, like, it seems like skateboarding culture, like, yeah, like you mentioned mid nineties, there's, there was the skate, the skate kitchen, I believe it was a movie and there's a show called Betty on HBO about like skateboarding culture too. Have oh. you thought about kind of like, do you want to like do something about skateboarding one day? Like as an actor, that'd be cool. Skateboarding is really important to me. So I, I think, I think, yeah, I, uh, eventually there's, there's a lot of things that I eventually want to want to do clearly because you know like i i love you know like stargirl like tv shows and like quirky comedy and stuff like that but at the end of the day films are just my i'm I'm a huge film buff and i i love films like and and i think that's the biggest thing that i want to do is just working in film i also write a lot so just like just writing about for me that what shines out the most like when jonah hill wrote mid 90s is like things that mean something to him so it just i think if i were ever to have like a dream project it's just something that means something to me that's something that's like unique too so are are you also a fan of the genre of horror are you a horror film guy you know what no not really i don't really see the value in torturing yourself for two hours like in a horror (laughs) movie i mean it's like fun with your friends when you're like you know like like goofing around but like i i horror is definitely like it's interesting i don't know if i would ever be like in like a horror movie if that makes any sense but like the the funny ones are like the the comedy horror movies like the scream movies those those are kind of funny i mean oh yeah did you watch all the scream movies no i've not i've probably watched like one or two i watched one with um remember when uh dr phil was in it i'm pretty sure that one too i (laughs) that was funny one but uh I, I I don't know about horror. I never really got asked that question. That's it's just a, it's a popular genre. That's why, yeah. right? You know, it, it is a popular genre. And you, you know what I think? You know what I think did the best job with like horror, like comedy is Taika Waititi with um, what we do in the shadows. Oh yeah, that's, like, my favorite like um, like like the vampires and like them just having like regular stuff going. It's like okay, guys, who left the blood out? That's not cool, right? We gotta clean. Like, but there's know, like yeah. a show. There's a show now too, right? <laughs> Yeah, but it's showing that too. It's it's hysterical. Like, uh, I think I think Tiger probably directed a few episodes, but just the actors in that they cast that so well. Like that that's the funniest show on TV right now, hands down. No, absolutely. But, yeah, it's like it's. In three words, describe Star Girl. Interesting, interesting. I, I'd probably say family, um, dark comedy. And also just gritty. That's I four. I think that might have been four words. All right, all right, all right. Let's just say family, comedy, and gritty. All right. <laughs> <laughs> there is definitely. I agree with like the dark comedy aspect of it for sure. Like yeah. there, it, it definitely. But it just. I feel like it's. I was talking to like Neil Jackson about this. You know, plays ice cool and like. There's a lot going on. Like there's so much going on in the show, man. No, yeah, there's there's so there's so many different uh, facets like to the show, definitely, yeah. and like I think you'll see with the next episode is that there's I for, I forgot what's going on. So like so, some part of the plot really like advances like because like how we how we left off with episode five was like that you know Cameron Gelman uh, who who plays um, I forgot what his name is oh Rick who plays Rick like is becoming like our man. And Yolanda is Wildcat, and you know Beth might get like the night fishing glasses or whatever the hell. And then that that plot kind of starts to advance, and then you start seeing what's happening with Icicle and Barbara, and what's happening with Mike at school, yeah. or what's happening with like Mike's jealousy, or like you know Pat trying to juggle between Barbara and like it. There's just so much, so many things happening, and there's just literally they they do such a good job of that. Like with my my example that I always use is like when they use. Um, uh, what's his face? Um, Eric Goins. Eric Goins, who who plays the gambler, uh, like his his little scenes are so great. There's these like these little side scenes, and like they that that just to me shows how how much thought is put into all these separate characters. Yeah. Like like when he's sitting in like the movie theater and the guy comes up behind him, that just seems like such like a cool noir like like scene, and it just like everything ties together so well. For sure. No, absolutely. It's amazing. Well, Trey, thank you so much for coming on Popternative, man. Thank you. Thank you for having me on, man. Of course. Um, so obviously people could watch Stargirl right now on DC Universe and on C- the CW. 
Yes, and the CW app too. Like the day after it comes out on Tuesday, you can also watch it for free on the CW app. Amazing. And where can people follow you on social media to keep up to date with everything? You can follow me at Trey Romano. It's as simple as that. Just just Trey Romano. So yeah, you can follow me there. And you know, like, I mean, I, I'm not the most exciting person in the world, but hey. You can <laughs> you, have you thought about uh, posting uh, like uh, some clips of you playing guitar at all? You know what? I I, th- I thought about that, but I'm always like, because I I'm such a perfectionist. Like I I could, I could like play something. And I'm like, nah, 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 nah. It's, I I would be like, <laughs> if I was ever to post something, it would probably take like three days of constant playing, just to, like finally get something that's up to my standard to like post. But yeah, I don't know. I think maybe, <laughs> maybe. Well, seriously, congrats with the success of Star Girl, man, and uh, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me on, man. No problem. This has been Pop Turnitin, youtube.com slash Pop Turnitin for previous episodes. Until next time, this is Trey Romano and PD Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnitin. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnitin on YouTube. Be sure to like Pop Turnitin on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.